My story today begins on September 11th, a day that devastated thousands of lives and a day that pushed many lives in totally unexpected directions. I, for example, was sent to Afghanistan to study the environmental impacts from 30 years of conflict. I had just joined the UN Environment Program here in Geneva, and this was my first assignment. Now, we spent months traveling across the country, looking at the environment and its natural resources, and we came to a very clear conclusion that peace would never be built in Afghanistan until three critical natural resource challenges were addressed. The first challenge, resource degradation. This is a photograph taken in the 1980s of a pistachio forest in northern Afghanistan. This is a similar photo taken in the 1980s of a juniper forest, also in the north. But when our team arrived in these locations, these forests looked like this. Completely and totally devastated. In many cases, 99% of the forest cover had been lost. In other cases, a single tree was left standing. And this is a critical problem, not from a conservation perspective, but from a livelihoods one. Without wood, how do people build shelters? How do they cook food? How do they heat their homes? How do they survive during the winter? The second challenge, resource governance. Now, if I asked you, what's the major and most common source of local level conflict in Afghanistan? What would you say? A lot of people would say, clearly, it's the Taliban, no question. And they would be right. It is a significant source of conflict. Ethnic difference is also a major source of local level conflict. But if you ask communities what is the most significant source of conflict that you face on a day-to-day -day basis, it's water and land. 80% of the entire population depend on land and water for their livelihoods. But after 30 years of war, the governance systems for land and water had largely broken down, leading to conflict. The third challenge, resource wealth. You may have seen recently that one to three trillion dollars worth of minerals have been discovered in the Afghan soil. Now to put this amount in perspective, here's the Afghan national budget, 17 billion. This is the amount that's given to all developing countries in terms of international aid per year, 133 billion. And here's one to three trillion. It is a potential phenomenal amount of wealth that could be used for peace building if it can be transformed into revenues, jobs, basic services, and infrastructure. But that transformation process has to happen without generating new sources of conflict, without creating corruption, and without generating new environmental degradation. So this wealth could either unite or divide Afghanistan, depending on how it is managed and how the benefits are shared. So with these three challenges in mind, resource degradation, resource governance, and resource wealth, we left Afghanistan and we returned to Geneva. And our first question, well, what does UN policy say about these issues? The UN has operated in 50 different post-conflict countries. Where are the lessons learned? How should we deal with these issues in Afghanistan? So we went knocking on doors, all the different agencies, both in Geneva and in New York, and we made a fairly shocking discovery that there was no policy and none of the lessons had ever been captured. And it wasn't that lessons weren't learned. They'd simply never been collected because agencies couldn't agree on who should do it. And at this point in my career, I really asked myself, is the United Nations united? What can I do to address this problem? And I soon discovered there were other people and other institutions also looking at this issue. And rather than going in our separate ways, we decided to collaborate. We formed a very small coalition, and we said, we're going to fill this gap. We're going to collect the lessons, and we're going to help post-conflict countries deal with natural resources. And our initial vision was quite modest. We thought we would put together 
10 experts, we'd look at 10 different natural resources, and we'd look at 10 countries. And if we were lucky, we'd generate one book and one set of policy recommendations on how to address these issues. So we began by making a call to the global community who wanted to collaborate on this issue, who wanted to join this coalition looking at natural resources and peace building. And I have to say, we were overwhelmed by the response. In the end, 12 UN agencies came forward saying, yes, we'd love to collaborate on this issue. It touches our operations every day we're in. 25 organizations also came forward, from the private sector to NGOs to think tanks to military entities, all offering to collaborate. And 12 different donors and foundations also pledged support. But what's even more impressive is that 250 experts came forward offering their time and expertise. And this allowed us to actually collect lessons from over 50 different post-conflict countries. Now this is a huge amount of information and we had to use a whole series of collaborative tools to organize it, to peer review it, and to co-create a number of products. So what do we create? We started with a series of six books containing 150 lessons learned from all of this material. All of these books are now being published and all will be freely available online for all practitioners to use. We also created two new tracks, one set of policy recommendations, guidelines for policymakers and decision makers, and a separate track of guidance for field practitioners. And we finished all of this by establishing a brand new policy, a UN-wide policy on natural resources in post-conflict countries. This policy was approved in January 2013, and it was endorsed by 38 different UN actors. This is a milestone policy, and it is a great indication that the UN can be united and can, can collaborate inside and outside of the system. Perhaps more importantly, we established a new community of practice, a community of experts, a community of knowledge that can now go out and share these lessons with the world. So let's return to Afghanistan. These lessons are now about being applied. Landscapes that look like this are being restored to look like this. We are learning how to unlock the peace-building potential of natural resources. But the challenges faced by Afghanistan are common to all post-conflict countries. So as the global population continues to rise and the demand for resources continues to grow, now, more than ever, is the time to heed these lessons. We must continue to collaborate and unite to make natural resources a cornerstone for peace building everywhere. Thank you.